Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at Revenge of the Super Skrull, a Roll20 exclusive adventure for the Marvel Multiverse role-playing game. And in this video, I'll go over the plot of the module, what's included with it, as well as give some insights based on my own experience from running it. But before we get going, just know that this video will be chock full of spoilers, so any players out there, consider yourselves warned. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So, some backstory on this adventure. Years ago, the Skrulls, a race of shape-changing aliens, infiltrated Earth during an event known as the Secret Invasion, during which time heroes were replaced by Skrulls. Now eventually, Mr. Fantastic developed a device that forced the Skrulls to revert to their natural form, which revealed who'd been supplanted and ultimately paved the way for the Skrulls' defeat. Since then, scientists at Advanced Idea Mechanics, or AIM, have discovered a way to circumvent Mr. Fantastic's invention, and a splinter sect of Skrulls plan to steal this technology in order to launch a second secret invasion. And this is where our heroes come in. The leader of this splinter group, Gobak, plans to recruit unwitting heroes and use them to steal the plans for this circumvention device from AIM for him. So let's start out by walking you through what's included in the module. Over here, under Roll20 information, there are a collection of handouts that give information of some of the behind-the-scenes features. The Game Settings handout talks about dynamic lighting and how tokens are configured. The Battle Map Scale handout lets you know that all the maps are sized to use 5-foot squares, and the Module Shortcuts handout lists some keyboard shortcuts that you may find helpful. But the two that I really want to call attention to are the Rollable Tokens and the Movable and Rollable Objects handout. Rollable Tokens lists all the tokens in the module that are multi-sided. Because this adventure involves shapeshifters, there are a bunch of tokens that can flip between scroll form and another identity, and we're going to see more about that in a bit. The Movable and Rollable Objects handout lists all the objects on the map layer that can be moved around. Your heroes can throw cars and ATMs as they stop a bank heist. There are machines that can be destroyed in a later building, and there's a crane that can be moved. And this is really cool because it gives the characters a chance to interact with the environment, but the players aren't going to know about those things just by looking at the map. So be sure to suggest things like, hey, you could rip that ATM out of the wall and throw it if you want. Quick side note, I actually did that during my game, and my player absolutely loved being able to throw ATMs at the bad guys. So now let's take a quick peek at the pages that are included in the module. We've got this really nice landing page for our players, and then we have a helper page with some information about useful Roll20 shortcuts, how to navigate dynamic lighting, how to flip multi-sided tokens, and I really like this because it helps folks who are new to Roll20 navigate the system more effectively. Next, there's this dynamic lighting example page. So if you do have a Plus or Pro account, it acts as a tutorial to help you understand how your players and NPCs will see the world. And again, I think this is really nice because you can tinker with the settings here without risking messing up an actual page. And then we get to the pages that are part of the actual adventure itself. And this adventure is a one-shot, or in Marvel terms, a single issue. So our adventure begins with our heroes thwarting a bank robbery, which is this map here. So the pre-generated heroes that we get in this adventure are Ant-Man, Daredevil, Hawkeye, the Clint Barton version, Luke Cage, Miss Marvel, that is Kamala Khan, and Wolverine, that is Laura Kinney. They're going to go through and they're going to deal with all of the bank robbers who have taken these civilians hostage. And so our heroes will go in, they'll battle the bank robbers, and they'll save the day. But a couple of fun things to know about this map. For starters, if you go to the map layer, all of the cars and the trucks and the ATMs can be moved around. There are some of those movable objects that I mentioned earlier. But in addition to that, the walls on the dynamic lighting layer are drawn as small segments. What this means is, if one of your heroes decides they want to throw this truck through the wall, you can delete just that one piece of wall, and now when you look through your hero's eyes, you can see that they have blown a hole in the building and they can go in through that. And I thought that was really pretty cool. Although honestly, more civic-minded heroes may just want to use the front door. 
Once the bank robbers have been dealt with, the heroes are approached by a man identifying himself as Agent Kurt, who claims to be part of an unspecified government organization, but he name drops Maria Hill of the CIA and S.H.I.E.L.D., and he tells the heroes that he needs their help with a matter of security and asks that they accompany him to a secure location. Now, as you can see, Kurt is a Skrull, but he's actually a Skrull double agent. He wants to expose Goback, and he really does want the hero's help. So, once the heroes agree to accompany him, and the module does include some contingencies in case the heroes don't want to accompany him, but once they do, he's going to lead them to this safe house map. And to begin, your heroes are just going to walk down this corridor and get into room B13. This is a conference room where they're going to meet Goback in his human form. And Goback is going by the name of Agent Gordon. He and Kurt will explain the Skrull situation, tell the heroes about what's going on at Advanced Idea Mechanics, and asks them to infiltrate the AIM building to recover the plans. So the heroes won't spend much time on this map before they jump into the AIM lab. Now the AIM lab is actually a hidden floor of the Bryant Tower building in New York. And so your heroes need to find a way to get up to this hidden floor. And there's a couple of ways they can do that. There's there's a way you can get to it through the elevator, but other heroes who can be more stealthy, like Ant-Man or Miss Marvel, can actually navigate through air ducts and garbage chutes in order to sneak into the floor. Your heroes need to navigate through the floor, finding key cards for the blue and the green doors that block their way, and they'll deal with these AIM agents as they're going along. Now, ultimately, they're going to come to this room here, which is controlled with both a blue and a green door. And within this room are the computers that contain the plans that the heroes are looking to retrieve. And those plans are guarded by none other than MODOK himself. Now, this fight with MODOK can be a little on the challenging side because MODOK is rank 4, whereas some of your heroes are only going to be rank 2. The good news is heroes are going to have numbers on their side. And my players got really lucky with their initiative rolls. They all rolled much higher than MODOK, so they all went first. And then one of my players took it upon themselves to incite a uprising among the AIM agents and basically had them overthrow MODOK so that they could get better dental benefits in a 401k package. It was actually pretty awesome. They basically went, they copied all the files they need and left with all the AIM agents just dogpiling onto MODOK until he gave them better benefits. Once your heroes have recovered the files from the AIM lab, they're going to go back to the safe house, and they'll have another conversation with Agent Gordon, who tells them that the Skrull have replaced Spider-Man, and he wants them to go out, capture this false Spider-Man, and bring him in for questioning. Now, in reality, this is actually Miguel O'Hara, the Spider-Man from the year 2099. He's traveled back to the past to prevent the Skrulls from performing that second secret invasion. When the heroes encounter Miguel, it'll happen here on the rooftops map. And this is a really great opportunity for roleplay. They think he's a Skrull, and he's not sure if they say they are who they are either. Now this scene may go a couple of different ways. The heroes may actually subdue Miguel and capture him and take him back to the safe house. They may have a conversation and realize that they're being duped, and then Miguel will team up with them, and they'll all go and try and fight the Skrulls. Or, Miguel and the heroes may not come to any kind of an agreement, and Miguel will just bail and try to handle things on his own. It's really up to how your players handle this particular scene in terms of how it plays out. In my group, they befriended Miguel, and they went and had a really awesome fight right afterwards. So speaking of that fight, what wound up happening was my heroes fought their own Skrull doppelgangers. You see right here, there is a Skrull version of every one of your heroes. And so what you can do is switch them between the hero form and Skrull form, and you can have a really epic battle. One piece of advice for this fight, spend some time in advance learning all of your character's abilities so that when this fight breaks out, you can use your hero's powers against them most effectively. This was a mistake I made. I didn't do as much research here as I could have. I really regret that. The fight was still really epic, but it could have been much more, especially when you start matching Wolverine versus Wolverine or Daredevil versus Daredevil, and then figuring out which of the heroes would be a good one to play against so that they can ultimately get the upper hand and win the day.
Once your heroes have dealt with their Skrull doppelgangers, they're going to head back to the safe house and they're going to want to deal with Agent Kurt and go back. And so as you move through this map, there are objects here that you can interact with. So these devices here are multi-sided tokens. You can switch between the sides. These device arms here are movable, so your heroes can pick them up and throw them around. So really you want to review that movable objects handout so that you know exactly what can be moved on each map, and that'll help make for a much more cinematic experience when your players get to this area. Now at some point, as they're going through the safe house, the heroes will come across Agent Kurt again. Kurt will reveal himself to be a Skrull, and will tell them that he has been working on their behalf. And this is true, he has. Whether or not the heroes believe him, well, that's another story entirely. Once Go Back is defeated, the adventure comes to a close. And the module does give some suggestions on how you could use this as the jumping off point into a bigger campaign, but I just ran this as a single one shot and just another chaotic day in the life of a superhero. So, there you have it, an overview of Revenge of the Super Skrull. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks. Excelsior.